Thank you for joining us here in Hit Points Gaming. Today we're going to be doing a review and a little bit of gameplay of Maho Kenshi. Uh, it's a deck builder with some adventure and story. Um, the story is pretty, pretty good. Um, there's a bunch of different characters you can play as, things you can unlock, really fun stuff. Um, so let's start right here. Um, so what it is, is it's not a typical deck builder as, you know, you're gonna be building a deck, um, like Slay the Spire, and then you complete the game with that same deck. Uh, well, what Maho Kenshi is, is you, as you play, you unlock a, a library of cards that when you play different missions, those library of cards are available for you to purchase, find, or explore and find. Um, so that's what these are. So you start off with like a world map, and you start with one, two, and then it opens up. So these bigger bubbles here are your main missions, okay? And then the side ones are side missions. So you start off by unlocking, progressing the story, uh, and it gives you these additional options here of these side challenges, these side missions to get more experience, to level up your characters, and, and, and so on and so on. Now each one has different amount of challenges. The challenges are what give you experience and things to unlock, uh, and they're not necessarily the side missions. Uh, the main story missions are, however, uh, and you can replay these missions as many times as you want to uh, get more challenges completed. Um, now with that though, say you complete a challenge and you were victorious. That challenge remains uh, unlocked, so you, you've completed it. You can go back there and try to do the other challenges. As long as you're victorious, that challenge will be done. It will be, you know, you'll be completed. So say you can complete all of the challenges in each one of these, these available missions. And it kind of creates some gameplay, some, some, some replay value there, because you're trying to go back in and possibly do it different, or maybe use a different character to, uh, to complete that, that side, that mission there. Um, so you do start off with this red character. Um, I believe this might be like the Sapphire House. Um, this is the first character you start with, and you have to unlock the others. So as you can see, I got her to level 10. Uh, I played her a lot. She was my favorite at the time when, it, when you first unlock her. Um, there's more equipment that you can unlock. We'll get to that as well. Um, so second, for first up, what she does is she does um, she sacrifices health for more damage or being able to play certain cards, which is what your damage. Um, this guy here is blue. He is uh, more defensive and strategic. So you're going to be moving around with defense, uh, counterattacking, taunting, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, not really my game. Not really my game play style, but he he's pretty fun. Uh, next up is this Jade House, so he's more poison, deception, uh, stealth. And then my final favorite character here, uh, Mikashi, she is uh, a caster, spellcaster, so more range. So she has more range. Um, this green and red character have a little more mobility because they do have to be close. Um, he does have a little bit of range as well, just not as much as the caster. Uh, and this defense guy, he kind of stands tall and makes and forces enemies to come to him. So as you progress through the game, you unlock these different characters. And you can level them up to unlock different things. More cards for them, more equipment to share with other people. So equipment. Um, when we get into a mission, I'll show you that. Next up would be the ways to spend your experience. Okay. So as you play each of the side missions and story missions, you get points to spend. And these are just kind of like talent trees. And you do reset your upgrades for free, and you get everything back. So if you play with the Way of the Sword and you don't like Way of the Sword, Reset your upgrades and repurchase maybe we had a Valor. Um, so this allows you to get more cards in your deck, remove certain cards from your deck, upgrade certain cards in your deck, uh, you know, add a little more equipment that you can carry with you, and so on. So these are nice, and these do help you as you progress through the story to make you a little more beefier, a little tankier, uh, and, and, and they just add a little more gameplay because you can change the way you want to play. So let's go ahead and go into a mission, and I'll show you exactly what things could be. Okay, so we're gonna do, we'll do this third mission here we're not showing too much. And it's a story mission. Um, so you can kind of see there's some story well, that plays throughout here. I'm gonna skip it to not really show too much. I'm going to show Kaito, he is the House of Sapphire. Ru oh, Ruby Sapphire, Sapphire is blue, I should have known that. Jade and Topaz. So you can see different levels of the characters, the more you play them and more experience. Um, so as you pick a character, then you get your equipment uh, because of the upgrades I use, I can now carry three equipment cards. And when you play more characters, you can unlock more things. Uh, so real quick with the equipment is, this is the first one you start with, the Storm Dagger. So using the Storm Dagger, you gain four strength for that turn. Just like every other game, four strength, uh, it means four more damage, okay, for that turn. And then that six with the Hourglass means 
you use this and then you have to wait six turns for it to become available for you to use again. Uh, and it kind of gets the same thing for everything else, okay? And without spoiling too much. So this mission, victory is defeat the burning Oni, and the fail is you fail to protect the castle. I've unlocked an ability so I can gain a card right off the start of the so right off the start of the bat of every mission I can pick a card, an extra card out of my hand. So when you start each mission, you do have a base deck. Every character's base deck is the same. And as you progress through each adventure, you're going to add cards to that base deck. Okay? So this here is a basic travel. So it allows me to move. Um, this is a basic attack. And then this is that card I just picked up for the mission. So this is a hex base uh, movement game. Uh, and there are some, some things to it. So you can see there's different tiles here. There's four different tiles with some other buildings as well. So the tile I'm on is a plane. Provides no effect to the character or to the enemies. Next to me is a uh, forest card. So a forest card here gives you four defense if you are on that at the end of your turn. Um, so if, even if you stay there, you'll then get four defense next turn. Uh, four defense is kind of like armor, okay? So... Um, if I were to move here, someone were to do four damage to me, it would be blocked. And then if I stayed there, I would refresh that armor for the next turn. Uh, in addition, there are also hills, which gives you three bonus attack. And then there's mountains here, uh, two attack and four defense. So they're the best um, to be on. However, they are higher, so they cost more to get on. How do you move? You right click. And then when you know you want to move there, you right click again. Really cool. Um, so if I want to move to this forest space, it does cost two energy down here on the bottom. So energy is used for movement and playing cards. Uh, if I were to move to this plane, it only costs one. A mountain is three and a hill is also two. Uh, what's really neat too is you can right click to where you're gonna go and you can see just how much energy it's gonna cost you to get where you wanna go. And you only move when you right click again. Um, so I can see here, there's some cards here. I wanna get these cards to add more to my deck and there's a bad guy here. If I hover over him, I can see the orange around, that's where he sees, okay? So that's his, like, his uh, surveillance. He will then see me if I move onto that, that forest with the cards on it, he'll see me and possibly come after me. Uh, and these other guys here, you can see here, they, they have that, that orange there to show where they are, when they'll, when they'll kind of activate and see him. If I click on them, I'll see all the information about them, how much reward, how much gold I get. Gold is what you use to spend at, um, different buildings here, like this, cat, this village. I can buy more cards. There's also villages that allow you to upgrade your cards in your deck. Um, these here allow you to upgrade your base statistics for this mission, okay? Not for the game, again, just for this mission. Shrines allow you to remove cards from your deck. Um, and then like this might be the one to, okay, yeah, just buy more cards. So there's some cool things. Uh, the mission, this mission, this map is always this mission. The maps do not change. They're not you know, generated every time you play. So you will be able to come in here and say, you know what, I didn't like going north. Maybe I'll attack by going south this time. And there's more here for south, but there's a little more enemies here and more turns to get through it. So that's something to, to think of as well. So different ways to play each one. Now I could move here for two, but I'm gonna use one of these cards here to dash one tile. So it only cost me one. Picking this up, I can then see um, what card I want to gain and then I can see this guy's here so I'm just gonna move one more and now I'm going to play a card hopefully knock this guy out I have two damage I have two energy to spend uh, I'm going to use this to do 11 damage so seven and four because you have four defense and then use that to gain some extra block here and that's the end of my turn I'm done I click that hourglass then the enemy moves uh, he's the boss, that's why he's moving. Usually everyone else will stay inactive until you actually select them. So I'm going to move three to go here, pick up these new cards. Every time you pick up cards, you gain them right away, which is really cool because you can kind of plan out what you want to do. This here is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, um, but I'm going to stack it with some damage here. So I'm going to do four strength. You can see now the six is here because it's going to be, I become active again in six turns. And then I'm gonna do this area effect here to do 11 damage and gain some armor. I can't do anything else. I know this guy's gonna attack me. Let me see this ranger. He can't see me just yet. Uh, I'm on a plane, so I don't get any bonus. He's in a force, so he has that armor. And that boss is just gonna keep moving. So I'll finish this guy off. 
And um, I'm going to keep moving because I don't really... Uh, maybe I do come down here and get some gold. Uh, I'm going to do another uh, equipment here to gain two energy. And I'm going to move there. That was a bad move. I should have moved here and used this one. I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, but yeah, I'm here for now. <clears throat> so you can see this is the combat. As you play more, um, let's go here so I can show you what the market looks like. So you go into the market, you can recover health. This is a bonus I, I purchased through upgrades. Um, so these are the different cards available here. You can see how much they cost up here. That's their cost in gold um, and whichever ones you want to add to your deck. Two energy, one energy, this one's free. Some cool, just cool things to think of. And, and the way they play each character is, um, is interesting too because if they move a lot, you, you want to be able to move a lot to then do some damage. It's, it's fun. Um, so that's, it's, a, it's a very strategic game. You pick cards, you find cards, and you use them to build your deck in each mission. So that's something to take into consideration. It's not something that you build forever. It's really just for this mission. And if you don't like the cards you get, well, you can quit and retry the mission again and try to get some new cards to, to build your deck up a little stronger. Uh, I'm about 10 hours in. It is pretty fun. I'm going to find myself probably completing this and definitely playing more of the caster class because I really enjoy that. Um, but if you play this, let me know. Leave a comment with what character you've been, uh, how far you've gotten. Um, and just thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.